Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Today is going to be a so good tutorial. For those of you unfamiliar with So Good, it is a live that I do with my partner in craft, crafting with Delanda, and we do it every week. And when we can't bring a live video, we usually do a pre recorded one. So here we are. Today, we are going to be doing a fall applique project. Both of us are doing different projects, but it's pretty much the same type of project. Now, I'm going to walk us all through this today. We always use our Como Marquee 2001 embroidery machine. It's a 20 needle machine, but this can be done on a single needle machine as well. And I'm going to be using a little bit of polyester fabric. We're going to be doing a little bit of sublimation. In addition, I will be using some glitter HTV. All right, so I cannot wait to show you all this. I'm also going to be using my Caesar Romeo to cut out the fabric so that we don't have to be bothered with scissors. And so it's gonna cut it out and it's gonna cut it out beautifully, right? And then the glitter HTV, that's gonna cut it out automatically. So y'all, let's get started. You're gonna need some fabric scissors. You're also going to need a little bit of heat and bond, but this project is super easy, it's super fun. And y'all, look at the outcome. All right, so a link will be listed to Delanda's channel below in the description so that you can catch her video this week and see what beautiful thing she made. But y'all, let's get started. Let's, let's, enough talking. All right, guys, so we're at our Mighty Hoops hooping station and we are going to get ready to hoop our shirt. This is the part that goes at the bottom. So it'll fit right here. And these are adjustable frames. So depending on the size Mighty Hoop you have, you can adjust it so that your hoop will fit. And I'm just going to snap that into place. The next thing I'm gonna do is grab a piece of cutaway stabilizer since we will be embroidering on a shirt. And I'm just going to lay this flat. Now there are magnets here so that when we close these tabs, it will hold our stabilizer in place very snugly. And I'm just going to flip that down or up or down. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we have our stabilizer. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to place our shirt and we're just gonna fit the shirt on top, okay? So you're just gonna put the shirt on. Of course, you wanna make sure you have an opening to your shirt because if you just lay it on top like this, it is going to just stitch straight through and we don't want that, okay? So we're going to place this shirt on top. Now these fixtures are, or these frames are adjustable. So you can adjust them depending on the size hoop that you're using. And you also wanna make sure you're adjusting it according to the size shirt or garment that you will be embroidering on. So I'm just going to put this on here. This is a large Bella canvas shirt. All right, and this will help you to make sure you get your design on exactly how you want it to be. Now the frame starts up here. All right, so here's the frame and here's the top. And so the design is gonna be kind of up there, okay? Now another thing you can do is you can print out your design and place it on top just so that you can have an idea of exactly where it's going to be stitching. But this looks really nice and hooped. The next thing we're gonna do is grab the top of the frame and you always wanna make sure that you have the U shape on your right side. When you're facing your frame, you want it to be on your right side because that's how you're going to be placing it into your machine. And then you're just gonna put this on top and now we have that locked into place. And we're going to lift it up. And we're all hooped. Now this is what your hoop 
will look like in the back. And you kind of want yours to look like this too whenever you're hooping. You want it to look nice. And if you can hear that, that's the sound that you want, okay? So now we're gonna get ready to place this onto our machine. Now we're at the machine and I just want to always double check that I do not stitch my shirt together. So I went ahead and placed the hoop onto the machine and I checked underneath to make sure that everything is nice and clear for our stitches. And I'm gonna get ready to turn the machine on and we are going to head back over to the table so we can prep our other materials. All right, so we are actually going to be subbing a piece of material or fabric. This is polyester material that we will be subbing and this is the image i chose to go with the fall plaid theme i got this off of creative fabrica and we're just going to place this on top and sub it now i do have a piece of parchment paper but i do recommend having butcher paper we're going to place a piece of butcher paper on top and this material it subs best on a side, like a certain side like the back side I wouldn't sub on that. It's going to come out faded, but there is another side that looks a little more textured than the back. That's the side that we're going to be subbing on. And I'm just going to place this down here. We're going to place some heat tape on the edges just so that it doesn't shift. And today I am using my Rakoma heat press. It's a 16 by 20 auto press, and that's what we're going to be using. I'm just making sure that I tape it down. I don't want it to shift, and I definitely don't want any air to get underneath and cause any ghosting or any blurring of the image. So we're just going to kind of tape our edges. That's what we're mostly concerned about, okay? And then we're going to get a piece of butcher paper. I'm just going to place it on top. I am using a sub sublimation paper today. And sometimes that ink does go through the back of the paper. So I'm just going to push that in. And we're going to be pressing this for 45 seconds, 380 degrees. Bring it down. All right. So we're all done. I'm going to pull it out. And we're going to see how this subbed. Oh, that looks really clean. So that's our ink release. And this is our fabric that we just made. All right, so when we're done, like once this cools off, I'm gonna cut a piece cut the edges off. We're actually going to place a little bit of heat and bond on the back as well. Oh yeah, so now we're going to apply the heat and bond. And this is the ultra heating bond that comes in the red pack. And I'm just placing it on the back. And we're going to press this with the material face down, just like this. Okay, and I'm only pressing this at 250 degrees for about 10 seconds it doesn't even take that long i just want it to kind of be tacked on to the fabric i'm gonna count this down and honestly this should be enough okay so that was maybe about seven seconds Okay, and I did use a little bit of a parchment paper on the bottom because some of the heat and bond is beyond the borders of the fabric and I did not want that to actually stick onto my press or even stick onto butcher paper. So this is what we have. We're gonna let this cool off and then we're gonna peel it away. All right guys, so it's cooled off and we're just gonna peel the backing away. And I'm not sure if you can kind of tell like how glossy that is a little bit but the adhesive is nicely adhered to the back of it. Next, we're going to apply this on top of this cutting mat so that we can place this inside of our cutter so it can cut out the pieces for us. 
I'm just gonna lay this just like this. You want it to be nicely adhered. Now you can apply this with the fabric face down, but I generally do it this way. If you apply it with the fabric face down, you want to mirror your cut. If you if your fabric or material is directional, you would want to go ahead and mirror it. But in this case, I'm not mirroring it because I'm just going to cut it just like this. If you have a brayer, I would make sure to bray it down. Also, you can tape down your sides with painter's tape or masking tape just so that you can avoid it shifting and moving. All right, guys. So now we're at the Caesar Romeo and we're going to begin to cut our template. And I am just going to line this up like this. Now the way my material is, the way that I'm putting this into the machine, if it were going like this, that would probably be okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to flip the print around like that. Since we're going to be cutting in this position. All right, so we're gonna just put this in just like this. And we're using the blade the regular standard blade that comes with it and i'm going to lock this into place once i have it locked into place i'm just going to use the arrows on the machine to position my blade exactly where i want it to be i just want it right in that corner right on top all right and so for the cut settings we're going to go with a, I'm going to leave it at a cut speed of 10 and we're going to increase the force to about 50. Okay. And we're going to see how that cuts this fabric. I'm just checking my blade, making sure that there isn't anything in the way of the cut. There was something that was kind of stuck there, so I moved that out of the way. And we're going to get ready to send this over here to the cutter. I can totally see the cut. Kind of missed. I'm gonna have to recut that one. So let me see. Since it's over here at this edge, oh, look. So it did cut. So I'm gonna have to actually cut this corner again, and I'm just gonna probably try to position it somewhere around there. But if you look, look at that. That cut that fabric beautifully. That is going to look amazing. So the only part right here, my sheet wasn't long enough, so it didn't cut that. So I'm gonna just like kind of position a piece so that I could go ahead and cut that little piece out again. All right, so now we're at the embroidery machine and we're going to upload our design. Let's go home. And we are just going to upload the design from the USB. And that's the one we want. Now, sometimes all the files won't upload immediately, but if you're in a rush, you can click onto the three dots on the side. The option to save it to the machine will come up and then you just save it. Let's cover. All right, so we're gonna go to machine. And this is our design. And I'm gonna click select. And now we have our design on the screen. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna begin selecting the colors. So I'm gonna hit select color. And we have a few different things going on here. 
So the first thing is going to be, or the first stitch is going to be a placement stitch for the pumpkin. And that's for the fabric that we cut out. Now you can use glitter HTV, which we'll be using glitter HTV for the word spice. So you'll see both glitter and fabric being used for the applique portions. And so for this one, I'm gonna choose a fabric or a color that I can see really well. So we're gonna go with white. So we're going to, that is the second color. The next stitch is going to be a tack down stitch, which the tack down stitch is going to tack our material down. Now the way it's cut out, it's not really going to tack because that fabric is gonna fit in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use an adhesive spray to kind of help it stay into place. But for the tack down stitch, we can use, I'm gonna go ahead and use orange, which is five. And we're also going to be using orange for the actual satin stitch. Well, it's not gonna be, it's a, a twill stitch, but we're going to go ahead and press five here. So I continue selecting the colors for each layer or each stitch. And I just want to make sure that when you're doing applique, you want to make sure that your machine is set on automatic manual, especially if you're using a multi-needle machine. If you're using a single needle machine, you're going to have to change your colors out anyway, so it won't really matter at that point. However, with the multi-needle machine, you want to make sure that you are using an automatic manual setting. All right, so I'm going to click trace trace area and it's always good for you to manually place your machine on the first needle but I did not do that all right so it's tracing and all it's doing now is tracing exactly where it will be stitching all right guys so we traced it and now I'm going to get ready to begin stitching Okay, now it's time for us to pretty much just fill in the outlines of the placement stitch with the actual fabric for applique. All right, so I'm just gonna place this here. And I sprayed a little 504 spray on the back just to help it stick, but you can use um, Elmer's glue, like the glue sticks, to actually help you do that as well. Because you don't necessarily want to spray the shirt. So I just sprayed a little bit of the back, but I would recommend the Elmer's glue stick works just fine. Okay. So I'm just making sure this sticks so that once it starts stitching, I don't have fabric moving all around. Okay, this one was a little off because I was trying to stick with the same fabric. And as you see, my direction is a little bit off, but we're going to continue with it. I kind of wanted it to just flow, but if you see my orange stripes are going to the side and that's because of how I cut it, but I was like, you know what, it's fine. We can go ahead and go with it. All right, so all of our fabric is down. We're going to go to the next step. All right, guys, so we're about to stitch and I realized that I must have skipped the tack down stitch step, which makes sure that that material stays into place. It went ahead and started stitching the satin stitch, but instead of a satin stitch, for this stitch, I went ahead and used a tackle twill stitch, and I absolutely love how it came out, and everything is looking good, and I'm pretty happy with, with it so far. So that adhesive spray is coming in handy. <laughs> All 
right guys, so this part is done and it's all stitched around as you see. I did have a little bit of movement where it looked like it kind of shifted down some. And so some of that stitch here, it kind of went on top of the fabric and you can kind of see the, a little bit of the fabric sticking out from underneath, which is fine. But here, this is pretty perfect. All right, so the next thing we're going to get ready to do is we're going to move to the next step. And the next step is going to be to stitch the word spice or to get our placement stitch for the word spice. I'm just making sure there's nothing underneath here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place our HTV on top and I'm actually going to go ahead and hoop out our machine so that we can kind of get to it a little bit better. Okay, so here is the glitter HTV and it still has the carrier sheet on the front. We're going to peel that away. Now this should fit nicely on top. If you want to cut it out, you can. I am just simply going to place this glitter HTV right on top of the word spice. You see I'm peeling off that carrier sheet because you don't want your embroidery machine trying to stitch through that. It's not good. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place our glitter HTV with the carrier sheets peeled off. The adhesive and the backing is here. That is going to go on top of your word, okay? So I'm just covering up the word spice. All right, guys, so we have our glitter HTV on, and now we're going to hoop it back in. Hoop back in, and we're going to begin performing the tack down stitch. And again, the tack down stitch is really just to make sure that the material that we're using sticks to or is tacked down into our garment. All right guys, so that's all done and now I'm going to hoop it out again. And all we're going to do now is peel the glitter HTV away. And so once it starts to stitch, it almost creates perforation for you to just be able to simply, well, generally it's simple. Let me help, help it out by tearing it a little bit. Removing it. Now you don't have to remove it at this point. You can remove your glitter um, HTV after the satin stitch. I generally usually like to remove it at this point though, but you can remove it after the satin stitch. So we removed all of the extra glitter HTV from around and now we're going to go into the next step which is going to be the satin stitch around each letter. I'm just going to feel under here, make sure.
All right, guys, so all of this is done, and now it's time for us to just stitch the remaining parts, which is going to be the stem, the leaf, and the word season. So I'm going to actually change this from automatic manual to automatic at this point because it can just keep stitching everything through. Right, guys so we finished stitching this out it didn't take long for this to stitch the total stitch time was about 34 minutes and I I had it at a 950 speed but everything stitched out beautifully we finished it with the word season and that was done in a satin stitch but I love how this is looking I absolutely love it I can't wait to play around with it and mix up some of that applique a little bit more maybe different types of applique inside of the pumpkin would look Pretty, pretty awesome. I can't wait to try it. All right, guys, so we're all done. And it is gorgeousness. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love how it came out. It looks so beautiful. So we're going to remove this from the hoop and then we're going to press it just so that we can activate that adhesive on the back of the pumpkin, the fabric on the pumpkin, and also that HTV, that glitter HTV for the word spice. All right guys, so now it's just time for us to press the shirt and that is to press the applique portions onto the shirt. All of this has an adhesive underneath, so remember we put the heat and bond on the fabric so that's gonna make it stick and then also the HTV has adhesive. All right, so we're just going to place a piece of butcher paper. I'm not pressing this too high. It's about at 280 and that should be enough. Now, if you want to flip your shirt inside out and press it that way so it makes contact with the back, then do that, I do, I do that often. And I put the butcher paper on top, even though we're pressing at a low temperature, I still place the butcher paper on top just to protect my heat press. I don't want any of that ink to go on top. All right, so that is nice and stuck on there. And that looks pretty good. I still might take it and put my butcher paper down and still hit it from the back. Right. That looks great. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to flip the shirt inside out so that we can cut away all of that extra stabilizer. And so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna trim away some of these stitches or some of the thread here. I'm not really trimming away the stitches, but just the thread, just to clean it up. You can put tender touch on the back of this. I'm not gonna be putting any tender touch on the back of this. This will be for me to wear. But if you're selling them or anything like that, I would definitely put some tender touch. And that tender touch protects your stitches. And it also reduces any ir irritation that your customers or whoever it is that you may be giving it to somebody, any irritations that the thread may cause. All right, and we're just going to cut away some of the stabilizer. Now I do like to leave, leave a little piece of stabilizer. I don't wanna cut along the line of the actual stitches, but just leaving enough there. And then I'm gonna cut, keep cutting this. You can get 
in this area if you want. But be careful that you don't cut your shirt. So that's one thing I'm always worried about. So I will definitely try to make sure I don't do that. All right, so this is what we have, y'all. And I think it looks really nice. I love how it came out. All right, y'all, so we are all done with our project and y'all saw it from the beginning. It looks absolutely beautiful and this is totally something that you can do. I will have a link listed below to this file if you are interested in making this and it will be in different sizes. So check it out if you are interested but i do want to thank you all for watching this so good tutorial definitely head over and check out delanda's video and let us know what you think about our projects please remember that so good is every weekend either saturday or sunday it's either on this channel craftable things or it's on delanda's channel crafting with delanda but thank you all so much for watching and until next time y'all later